As you can probably see from most of my videos, I tend to make lots of points and I uh, debate and argue with lots of people about issues of morality and mainly Christianity. I found one very common argument which seems to come up relates directly to slavery and the number of times this has come up is, is getting rather uncanny. This is usually split into two different arguments and I'll address them separately. The first one is that slavery is somehow condoned in the Bible and that in itself is immoral. And the second one is using the example of Western slavery later on um, as an example of how morality is subjective and what is acceptable at one point is not acceptable later on. Addressing the first point, in regards to slavery in the Bible, slavery is generally uh, mentioned very little in the Bible except in saying that the Israelites were saved from being slaves in Egypt. But um, people often mix up the ideas of slavery and think the slavery which is described in the Bible is actually the same kind of slavery which was practiced in the Americas, in the Caribbean, on cotton plantations and sugar plantations um, much more recently and they think that the, the, the word means the same thing, which is rubbish. In order to show this, we can just look at three simple verses which make it very clear. Deuteronomy 24.7, Exodus 21.16 and 1 Timothy 1.10 Basically, take an Exodus as an example, if you kidnap someone, um, which is what was required in order for the slave trade to carry on, um, you would be killed. It was, it, was a punishable, it was an offense punishable by death. And so clearly, that form of slavery was completely impossible in Israel in that sense. You could not go to a country, um, uh, pick up a, uh, some people, move them across and sell them on to someone else in that way. That wasn't the way it worked. So that shows that the type of slavery um, involved or described in the Bible is completely different to Western slavery as to pick people up in peacetime, duck them and then take them across to another country and then just sell them on would have been um, an offence punishable by death. So what was the slavery which they're talking about in the Old Testament? Well, essentially, one must remember that uh, in these times there was no welfare state. If you were hungry, if your crops had failed, if you were lazy, if for whatever reason you were very poor, then you would starve to death. You don't have any food, you don't have any resources, you don't have any clothes, and therefore there's no welfare state at this point. You can't go to the government for a handout, and therefore the result would be that you starve to death, which is obviously very unpleasant. If, however, you didn't want to starve to death, which is probably what most people would want, uh, there was an alternative. You could go to someone who was um, uh, doing well, who had enough food and who had shelter and clothing, and you could say to yourself, right, um, I'm going to be sold to you as a slave, and as a result that person would have money if they need to pay off debts or if they just needed money, and they'd also be provided for in terms of clothes and food. Obviously there's no point in having a slave and not feeding them because they'll die and uh, that's no use to you. So obviously they'd get food and clothing and shelter. And they weren't allowed to be overly harsh to them. They were to treat them as a servant. Um, if a, a Jewish person sold themselves to another Jewish person, it says in Leviticus 25, 39, to 41, that you were to treat them as if they were a hired servant. Also, not only would you have to treat them in a way which wasn't harsh, but every seven years it would be declared the year of Jubilee, and that would mean that all the Jewish slaves would be released. So if you did sell yourself to someone as a slave in order to keep your, uh, in order to provide food and clothing and shelter for yourself, after seven years it expired, then you would be free again. Regardless, you could not contract further than seven years. And if the year of Jubilee was only two years away, or well, then you'd only be able to do it for two years, or if it was three years and so on, you could only contract away seven years at any one time absolute maximum. And obviously you would be reimbursed greater for seven years work than you would be for two years work or one years work. So, so what these rules are saying, now, they're actually uh, setting down rights and protections they're not saying you should do this or you should do that. They're saying 
if you choose to do this, you're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to be particularly harsh to your slave. You have to treat them as if they're a servant, for example. Or they're saying, um, if you look at Deuteronomy 23.15, it says if uh, someone's slave escapes and comes to you, you're not allowed to tell the master. You're not allowed to take that slave and return them to their master. They're protected. It's not saying whether the slavery is right or wrong there. It's saying if they do escape and they do come to you, you are legally not allowed to return that slave to them. They must be allowed to dwell with you. I'll read it to be specific. It says, uh, you shall not give back to his master the slave who has escaped from his master to you. He may dwell with you in your midst, in your place which he chooses within one of your gates. Where it seems best to him, you shall not oppress him. So again, this isn't laying down an endorsement of um, slavery. Even the Jewish slavery, which required people to be fair and just, um, what that was laying down is once again a protection for those who may be slaves. So virtually nothing is actually said endorsing and encouraging slavery. It's merely setting down the rules for those who do. And those who do generally are using slavery as actually a way to keep themselves alive rather than starving to death. But it should be emphasised, it's essentially nothing like Western slavery.